Welcome back. We are looking at the viability of BRICS as a forum. And before the break, we were talking about the kind of difference that BRICS can make on the global stage. Hardeep, would you like to really reflect on what kind of a difference will BRICS make in terms of global politics? When we have the G8, we have the G20, and BRICS is really, I think, acquiring some traction over the last year or so. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Uday, I think um, the um, excitement about the G8 or the G7 is really, um, uh, has already diminished because the economies which are members of that grouping are in varying degrees of uh, uh, trouble. Disarray. <laughs> Disarray, disrepair. I mean, it's not for me to use those terms. <laughs> but, you know, if you look at the Western Europe, if you look at um, even Canada, if you look at all these other economies, particularly the West European ones, there, there are economic difficulties. Uh, the G20 is actually a grouping which is a byproduct of the world financial and economic crisis. And the uh, finance minister level group of the G20 was just upgraded for macroeconomic coordination after the crisis in 2008 September. But what can the BRICS do in the context of current geopolitical reality? Well, the BRICS grouping contains inherent with it, within it a contradiction. Two of its five members are permanent members of the Security, Security Council, Council, which is Russia and China, and two of them, that is Brazil and uh, India, Aspire. are aspirants, and so is, in fact, South Africa. South Africa may not be a member of the G4, but it works closely with the G4. So you have three as aspirants working along with two permanent members. And I think it could make a world of a difference if, for instance, in the Fortaleza summit in Brazil, there was to be an announcement that Russia and China will actually sit down with Brazil, uh, South Africa, uh, uh, and, and, India. Uh, yeah, and India to work out and examine what modalities can be do to get convergence on uh, geostrategic issues. When we were on the Security Council, especially when we were presiding over the Security Council, and even otherwise, we had excellent cooperative arrangements with the Chinese and the Russians. With South Africa and Brazil, that's taken for granted as Arvin testifies to his days in the IMF. Therefore, it is in effect something which can be achieved. But you must make an effort. I am not aware of any serious Indian effort having been made in the first five summits. Uh, therefore, the new government here, and I think it's a little early, you know, uh, 40 days yeah. is not enough for a new prime minister. His team is uh, new. They are still being sensitized uh, and battle inoculated, if I may and use the term. The nuances the nuance, of the... With the nuances. But I think by the time the next summit takes place, we'll of have the a breaks, better... we will have a better appreciation. And by that time, I think we will come also to a point of decision. If the BRICS as a group has to have relevance, what is it, it is essentially an economic group. Then what is it that we can do in terms of facilitating economic cooperation? Uh, these. The, these present um, proposals on the table, I'm sure Arvind has the, uh, both the Fine expertise print, yeah. and the um, you know, actual working knowledge. I, I would defer to his judgment on that. Arvind, you want to come in? How will BRICS make a difference in the economic and fiscal management of the global economy? See, it's really, as I said, my experience of three years is that it's a perspective you can bring to global discussions. Now, if there are no global discussions going on, in a sense, uh, you know, for the reasons he's saying, if they are all preoccupied with their own problems, then there isn't that much. Then you have to have a different track. It's a plurilateral, as we, mm. we said. You know, that is, uh, can we gain by uh, starting some uh, thing by ourselves? But uh, j just before we, I mentioned the ba bank again, you know, the bank can make a difference because there is a gap in terms of infrastructure funding, et cetera. But our experience of the World Bank is that the equity, equity shares and voting shares go together. So this asymmetric structure is not viable. You know, if, if China contributes 40 and the rest contribute 18, inevitably they'll want 40% of the, the vote. And so it's not a viable uh, structure. structure. You, know, you have to contribute what you want the vote share to be. But it can be multiplied. The whole point is that the countries act as a kind of guarantor. You know, just like in a company, you have debt and equity. This is the equity. This is the risk capital. So you can multiply it through debt, but then you have to have a very good, efficient structure because you have to reduce the risk for people who lend to you. 
So it, it can be done, but I am I am not very hopeful at this stage on the BRICS bank. You know, on this, Arvind, again, can I ask you for a brief response? There is one anxiety that will China use the BRICS as a forum dominate. for dominating yeah. Asian financial transactions or be the alternative to the dollar. Is that a possibility or is well, that, that misplaced? That is a risk. If, if it is 40 uh, for China and 40 for the rest, that is, they are is in the, the driver's danger. Seat. Yes, they will then be in the me, driver's let seat. Let me sort of move yeah. this to Hardeep. Yeah. Hardeep, we know that over the years, China invested in the SEO, the Shanghai Cooperative Organization. Again, the anxiety definitely in India is that China seeks the equivalent of a unipolar Asia where it is the single pole and yet it is asking for a multipolar global arrangement. Now are we sort of in a way enabling what you might call as a Chinese advantage by investing in BRICS or you think there is enough insulation to avoid that? No, I don't think our uh, investment in BRICS thus far has created um, any additional vulnerability for us. I don't think that's happened. So far, uh, with due respects to all those who have had something to do with BRICS, I think nothing but more than an exalted uh, forum for um, high-level discussions. Mm. And if some uh, bilateral group Hardy, can flow be it, careful what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far, <laughs> no, so no, far. No, but, but you know, but let's be, I mean, we are professionals. And uh, I'm not speaking on behalf of the government of India. Uh, I'm speaking in my personal capacity here. Let's be very clear. So far, we haven't done anything which would enhance our vulnerability on the kind of thing you're speaking to. Whatever has happened in the past, let's put that on one side. I think repairing our relations with uh, the People's Republic of China is an imperative of Indian foreign policy just now. The fact is that China's new postures, recent postures, and China's having difficulties with all her neighbors with all countries in Asia, except perhaps three, Pakistan, North Korea, and, India. and Cambodia. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I, probably. all the others have some degree of unease. So I think it is in China's interest and in India's interest to utilize this high level interaction between the two heads of state and government to lay the basis for higher level interaction, which is on the anvil in the coming months. And if we can get that sorted out, some of the kind of anxieties that you are mentioning, Uday, and that uh, Arvind has also mentioned, I think those can be handled by us. We have the, uh, capacity. the capacity, the resilience to be able to sit down with the Chinese and indeed the others and say, all right, guys, if you want an uh, economic entity to be created, let that economic entity be created with sufficient safeguards so that nobody has any um, uh, you know, anxiety or vulnerability on this becoming another Chinese dominated show as against the IMF which is dominated by another set of people. Yeah. Just one more comment. Uh, you know, I found that the Brazilians in some sense were more, most plurilateralist in that sense. You know, all the rest, uh, I won't order them. I mean, we <laughs> yeah. also, but they were most interested in a joint kind of effort rather than each one pushing their own personal agenda, so to say. So I'm glad it's happening in Brazil, and that actually is a, another opportunity, yeah. uh, which I hope uh, yeah. uh, the PM will but explore. Arvind, uh, it, ha it uh, happens by rotation, so yeah. it's the Brazilian's turn yeah, now. It just happens, yeah. right. But Arvind, to come back to this right. question of opportunities, we've just had the budget, and you have been writing and speaking about this extensively. For the Modi government, does the BRICS as a forum or for that matter the kind of leverage or the possibility of engaging say with Latin America or Africa, does it po you know, offer us any kind of a leverage yeah. or a, f you know, a forum for us to advance the economic agenda for India? You know, the only statement of the government which is on record is the President's address. Yeah. And you will recall, I, I said this this morning also, uh, the order is BRICS, uh, China, Japan and the US. So uh, I don't think uh, these multilateral or pro-lateral yes. are on the top of the agenda. That yes. doesn't mean somebody will no, not be going and doing. No, but I think that's a contradiction no. because PM was investing in SARC. No, so no, the suggestion absolutely. that I, I think SARC I, is on top. No, no, it's no, on no, top but, of the but list. I, I, I oh, think there is, a, there is a, there is a so, gap, yeah. gap there which I think needs to be commented on very briefly. Yeah. When the president's address was drafted, I'm sure a few things were taken for granted. Right. There is no reference to South America. There's no reference to yeah, that's West Asia. Yeah. But I think that's not what was intended. Mm. Clearly, 
some of the immediate preoccupations, like if you are not at peace in your immediate neighborhood, then you can't hope to reach out to the rest of the world. That explains SARC. I think the BRICS came in there because this was an early engagement which the government was looking at. But There's no BRICS there. Uh, no, but the BRICS... Uh, oh, it's the BRICS not there. That's what I'm okay, saying. I think you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. But let me also make another point. I stand corrected. This invitation to go to Brazil and participate in the BRICS summit is accompanied by another invitation. He to will meet be meeting me. the yeah. heads, heads of, of state and government of the, of the South American countries, yeah. uh, several of yeah. them, yeah. you know, yeah. Peru, Uruguay, um, Paraguay, Argentina, yeah. Chile, a number of them. Yeah. And that is, I think, an excellent opportunity for the new prime minister to meet uh, with his to meet with them, and some of the follow-up action can be taken when he's at yeah. the UNGA yeah. uh, in September. I strongly I mean, endorse that. That is exactly what I was trying to get uh, Hardeep to move towards. I think the big opportunity here is Latin America, with Brazil as more or less now recognized as their leader. You know, I remember five, ten years ago, they all used to try and undermine Brazil. But in the last three years, I asked many leaders from the other countries, they all accept that Brazil is way ahead of everybody else. So uh, meeting these Latin American leaders in Brazil is, I think, very, it's very not, important. It's, it's not Latin yeah. America and the Caribbean, yeah. because this is a line which oh, is South America. And Mexico yeah, is yeah, not yeah. included. Yeah. Mexico is not included, but that's another country. But yeah. certainly Argentina and, uh, and the other countries, Chile and all, which are very important. You know, clearly, yeah. I think for the Modi government, if they have to do something which is different from what we had seen in the last 10 years with the UPA, personally, I would say the need to engage with both these continents, South America and with Africa, is imperative. And one hopes that this can be taken forward. But on that note, for India, which has identified a multipolar global order as the preferred objective, BRICS is an important forum. Clearly, Prime Minister Modi will have a rich and varied agenda to advance India's interests in Brazil, even as the host nation recovers from the fervor and trauma of the World Cup. Ambassador Puri, Dr. Virmani, Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you.